Hi. We have seen in part one the benefit for the organ player to drive external MIDI components from the upper keyboard. MIDI will provide an infinity of additional sounds on top of the X66. This technical part only provides a general overview and has been summarized on purpose. Full information is of course available on the Amon X66 website. Let's start with a look to the overall block diagram. As shown, three major elements are involved inside the console. The row of contacts located under the keys of the upper manual, the MIDI interface unit specially designed to be integrated under the keyboard, the contact to MIDI converter CTM64 and final cabling. As you can see on this picture, MIDI out signals from the CTM64 are connected directly to the external MIDI equipment. The analog outputs of each MIDI unit are feeding an audio mixer, which in turn drives a power amplifier connected to the speakers. Nothing really new up to date. Let's start with the orchestral traps contacts. While the upper manual is equipped with 15 rows of contacts per key, only the orchestral traps row provides DC voltages that can be exploited to trigger the interface unit. Let's see that on the next diagram. Don't worry if it looks complex at the first sight. Let's put the oscilloscope probe exactly at point B and see what happens. When the key is on, you hear it, you can see that this voltage at point B decreases from 26 volt to 10 volt. The concept is to take the benefit of those existing DC voltage variations to drive the interface unit and this without modifying the other circuits. Of course, as already announced, using the orchestral traps as MIDI command will sacrifice the original orchestral traps function. Now, the next operation is to see how to reach this point B in the keying module since we need to connect this contact point to trigger the interface unit. Theoretically, it looks simple, but it's probably the most delicate part of the MIDI installation. All the bakelite separators located between each keying module have to be removed. Then a short piece of single wire of about 5 cm has to be soldered at the foot of each resistor. Remember point B in previous shot. The other hand of this piece of wire has to be winded up on the nearest notch of the keying module. A thin iron solder is needed and be quick during soldering to avoid plastic melding. This operation has to be done 61 times. Now we have access to all points B and flat cables can be connected to the interface module. Just have a look on top of the interface boards. The addition of a MIDI interface unit is unavoidable for two basic reasons. Since it is the intention to preserve the original performances of the organ, then the input circuit of this interface involves high impedance input. The MIDI converter CTM64 only supports on-off switching signals to be converted into MIDI data signals. The plus 26 volt DC or plus 10 volt DC available at point B are not usable as such and have to be adapted accordingly. Based on that, it's easy to conclude that the interface unit will be composed of the input circuit high impedance, 
which role is to convert the voltage variations at point B into plus 12 volt DC when the key is on and 0 volt DC when the key is off. Those two DC voltages will drive directly the control pins of a bilateral IC CD4066 in order to provide on-off contact to the MIDI converter CTM64. Let's see the interface input diagram. How it works. In short, if the key is off, the same voltage will be applied to the base and emitter of the transistor Q1 which remains blocked. The voltage at point C is 0 volt. If the key is on, about 25 volt is applied on the base of the transistor Q1 which becomes conductive and the DC voltage recuperated at point C this time will be near plus 12 volt. Let's confirm that on the oscilloscope.